Hey, what's going on guys? Arava here and welcome back to my F1 2017 career mode, episode number 104 today for the Russian Grand Prix in Season 6. If you have missed the last one that was uploaded only yesterday, be sure to go check that one out before you see the rest of this one. But coming to Russia in high spirits, coming off what was a, a difficult race to say the least, a damage limitation race at the Bahrain Grand Prix, never gone well there. Russia, we've had a mixed bag really, Um, kind of up and down. Obviously it's a, it's a one-stop race in general and looking at the forecast, it's looking like it's going to be all clear. So it's kind of a hit and miss whether it's going to be a good one. Although, you know, going from last season in the Force India, it seems having the Mercedes power unit is going to be an advantage. That's always been a thing. We've always had to use quite a lot of rich mix, actually, and do plenty of fuel saving around the Russian Grand Prix in the Renault and the Toro Rosso, trying to kind of counteract the deficit in the Renault engine. But, you know, last season in the Force India, we were pretty damn well. I think the Mercedes can go well. I mean, our major issues with the Mercedes car have been in the corners, kind of the balance of the car. And Russia, inherently, Sochi is... Uh, it's a very flat circuit. I mean, that's uh, that's not even over exaggeration. It's completely flat, pretty much. There's hardly any elevation. So hopefully, in theory, that's going to mean our car will be pretty well balanced, actually, and we won't be having that kind of same knife edge kind of driving that we've had so far this season in the first uh, opening three rounds. Uh, it, uh, I can't believe it's only been three. It feels like already the season's gone on for a long time, but I think that's only because uh, I've really been struggling and not exactly uh, loving driving the Mercedes for now. But I'm sure and confident we can turn this car into a beast, you know, like Toto Wolf has said in interviews in real life, it's all about taming this uh, this kind of diva of a car, and I, I think slowly but surely we will do that, we've got upgrades coming for next race, obviously, at the Spanish Grand Prix last episode, at the end of it, I didn't actually mention it, but we just about, literally by, I think, 9 points, missed out on the chance to buy a minor upgrade I think we were on like a uh, on 791 points or something like that, so that was really frustrating, so we're gonna have to wait until the end of this episode to buy another minor upgrade, so that will mean we will have have about two coming in the span of two episodes then for the Spanish Grand Prix and then potentially Monaco or Canada, whichever one we pick. And then I think uh, we've already done some work on the chassis that's coming next race. I think the next upgrade for us to do will potentially be drag reduction or maybe just looking at the aerodynamics of the car with, uh, you know, obviously Monaco coming up. And then after Monaco, although Canada's obviously very, you know, all about the straights, then you've got uh, tracks like Austria where we'll be needing that downforce once again. But we're going to move into uh, qualifying then and through practice, just trying to do the best job we can, getting all the points as per you and all sunny at the moment in Q1. I say at the moment because actually, as I mentioned, it is going to be all dry in the race, it looks like. But in, in qualifying, it's actually a bit of a forecast for some rain in Q2, potentially Q3 as well. So at the moment, although we're under the sun and we slide through the final corner into Q2 and P11, it may start to rain uh, literally as we move on to Q2. And you can see it's completely overcast now, very doom and gloom. And you can see there maybe on the right-hand side, you might have seen Eagle Eye viewers, one little droplet of rain. And now you can see a bit more consistently, there are definitely a few droplets coming back, of, uh, coming about on the left and right of your screen. So the rain's always starting to come down. So pretty much we're trying to get in this kind of essentially banker lap on the dry before the rain gets too heavy because obviously you can see I'm skating across and it's already too much for me and this is the set of tires we may potentially starting the Grand Prix on and as we fast forward then it may actually be literally the set we start on because as the rain falls down I fast forward and we're knocked out of the top 10 we're down to the end of the session nearly with four minutes to go and it, you can see the the indicator on the bottom there is one picture of, of a droplet so it's still you know raining and damp essentially but as we fast forward through the session it then gets back to overcast, so it may be how we were at the beginning of the session, but because I fast forward a tiny bit too much, as I enter that lap, the game has really put my car quite back, and it doesn't even let me start the lap to even attempt to cross the line, it just retires me from the session, and we end up in 13th place, so... Frustrating is an understatement for how I feel after this qualifying session. Down in P13, and the rain's caught us out, and it's that sort of, I don't want to you know, blame this again, but I feel like it's again that same issue where, you know, the AI will go out and do that simulated lap time rather than do the lap that they can actually do on the track, where the track was very damp, and I, I just don't think they would be able to do those lap times if they were actually doing those lap times. I think the game has again simulated what the AI should be doing in dryish can kind of conditions, and it's a lot faster than I can manage, but at the same time, we also just got to put our hands up, maybe we just didn't do the job, either way, can't do anything about it now, we're starting down to P13, we do have a free ch uh, choice of tyre, but I think I'll probably still end up using the Ultra Softs, um, Dan Ricciardo once again getting a Red Bull pole position, so the Red Bull guys have been very good, although of course it's been two out of three wins on the uh, uh, in the first three rounds for Sebastian Vettel, so the Red Bull guys haven't exactly got it done and away from their front row lockout, so we'll see how it goes for this race, and again, Ferrari may go well, 
with the engine power, although technically Red Bull have caught them up in the engine development. Uh, and then these guys, Renault, obviously, they've been really underperforming. I mentioned that. And they went well last season, the last few seasons here at Russia. Obviously, we helped them massively in season three. And finally, Hamilton actually got onto the front row of the grid. So even more frustrating from my side of the garage in terms of where the pace seems to be, at least over one lap in the Mercedes car. So let's just go to the grid and then we'll see how we go in the race. And hopefully it's going to be a bit of a comeback. We're almost ready to go then. And this is what the starting grid looks like for today's race. It was a good showing from Red Bull in qualifying. And Daniel Ricciardo starts from pole position. And it's Lewis Hamilton alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Raikkonen. Vettel, Max Verstappen, and Ocon, Perez, Palmer, Massa, and Fernando Alonso, Kvyat, and the Mercedes, Kevin Magnussen, and Sainz, Stroll, Van Dorn, Nico Hülkenberg, and Pascal Wehrlein, Ericsson, and Roman Grosjean starts from the back of the grid. And now it's time to head down to the track. Right, so here we are on the starting grid. We move up one position due to Nico Hülkenberg having a big old grid penalty sent way to the back to the third last row. I think that was. So we are up into P12 at least. So one more position gain before the race even gets underway. And as I mentioned, you know, the frustrated being the kind of understatement from qualifying. So I'm really, really revved up to make the most of this start. Obviously, we can make up plenty of positions at the start. You can see it's all dry though. So it's going to be that one stop ultra soft to super soft tires. We will start on the set of ultra soft tires. It's a brand Bank a new set of ultra soft tires though as we can have a free choice so that's going to be really good for us to be aggressive so here we go then to five red lights to the Russian Grand Prix round number four of season six is underway the lights go out and it's a pretty mediocre getaway from us actually compared to Danica Fiat then but in the second phase then as we climb the gears going into turn one that kink on the right hand side we just about squeeze through there on the inside of Fernando Alonso a tiny bit of contact made there as we head down towards turn two then the Ferrari and Red Bull go side by side we're going to try and nip it to the inside Side of Jolly and Palmer is the two force Indians try and overtake Sebastian Vettel. Ocon gets squeezed out by Sebastian. We're going to try and go the long way round on our former teammate Sergio Perez. It's going to work and it might work on the second force India and a third car even down the inside. Very close stuff on that. Oh, almost off camber corner somewhat. Myself and Vettel have just about kept it side by side with no contact made into the next right hander. Then going to squeeze off Vettel. We've got the advantage. We've got half a car ahead so we can squeeze him out on the curbing and we're up into P5 then and now we're already up ahead looking to towards the back of our teammate Lewis Hamilton who's really dropped it off second place and he's down to P4. A great start then for Kimi Raikkonen. So the irony of me saying last episode that it looks like Vettel's AI has improved with the patch maybe. It's Raikkonen leading the way and the two Red Bulls squabbling over P2 and P3. Verstappen right around the outside of Ricardo, and it's a great little battle between the Red, uh, two Red Bull guys. Slight bit of contact made even into turn three so it gets a little bit hazy and frosty between those two and they lose some time and Raikkonen's going to benefit from that. You can see actually uh, They've lost some, uh, even more time, that, uh, so much so that myself and Hamilton have closed up. And we definitely both look a lot closer. I'm a lot closer to Hamilton here. And on lap four, down the back straight, such a big toe here with DRS open down the inside. A little bit of an early break to make sure we don't lock up, though. And we're going to get it to the outside. Then. And that's a very, very nice move, very slick move and satisfying move on our team at Hamilton. We're up into P4. So after a last episode where Hamilton pretty much slapped us at Bahrain, let's be honest, he got second place there and pretty much dominated us. Really nice to see that we can overtake him there with ease, actually, and using the DRS to good effect in that slipstream there. Now, we move later on into the race. Stoffel Van Dorn's got a huge issue here. He's in last place, and that's going to hold up this man, Raikkonen, in the lead now. We ride on board with him, and you can see, even though the blue flags are out, he's definitely getting held up majorly now as Stoffel goes very slow, and you can see there uh, Verstappen right up Kimi's gearbox there. So the, both the Red Bull cars have got within a second now of the Ferrari. So the top three all separated by one second. You can almost throw a blanket over them as the McLaren really does not help uh, either of them. That really helps us, actually, as we swing through the final corner then. Van Dorn still going slowly. We catch a tiny bit of a toe there as we shimmy right, then back to the left. And uh, we're going to try and just look on to chase after these guys. Meanwhile, they're going to squabble. And it's going to be Verstappen on the right-hand side to the inside for turn two. Raikkonen, what can he do? Can he defend for first place? Bit of contact made on the right-hand side. But no, Verstappen effectively just shoves him off there. And now Ricardo may have a little pop into turn three. Could he maybe have a better, a good enough uh, slingshot maybe to go down the inside or the outside for the next corner? No, he won't. But you can see right now... We've rapidly closed up there, and now I'm in shot with, uh, with uh, about half a second behind Ricardo. So this has really helped us out. Traffic 
so far has been our biggest friend so far at the Russian Grand Prix. Now as we move on to lap nine down the inside of Ricardo, he's unable to make the move on, uh, on Raikkonen so far. A bit of contact made on the left-hand side, but we barge it through and we're up into P3 now. So you can see what I mean. I was very, very, you know, ramped up for this Grand Prix. I was feeling more angry than anything really to be honest after the job in qualifying and so I was really ready to just attack, go full on and yeah a little bit of contact made there with Ricardo, but he was very close up there making the move you know down to that very heavy brake zone with Raikkonen also ahead of us locking up somewhat so close stuff there but I think fair enough and we're up into P2 now as Raikkonen makes his pit stop myself and Verstappen continuing on and we're going to effectively try the overcut strategy. Now, uh, Russia, a bit of hit and miss, really, with the overcut versus the undercut. I can't exactly remember from previous seasons which one's been the better one, but all I know is, in terms of the gap to Verstappen, I felt like it closed up a little bit in that next lap that I went on, so I think uh, we kind of had some good pace, and hopefully we'll come out ahead of not only Ricardo but also Raikkonen, so that would put us into a net P2, although I think there's going to be a few other midfield cars that are yet to make their pit stop, so it won't actually be P2 on the road quite as yet but uh, we come down the pit lane then Verstappen's in with us so we are definitely going to be at least you know behind Verstappen it's just going to be whether Raikkonen's going to slot in between us here so here we go down the pit lane let's go back on board and see so P5 Verstappen P4 and you can see Stroll is the car behind us no idea where Raikkonen is at the moment I would be astounded if he's jumped uh, both myself and Verstappen so I think that is us up into a net P2 then. So now we're looking on to the second phase of this Grand Prix and a replay here of Danica Fiat, the Toro Rosso car, going through into Sector 3 and an engine blowout for him as Verstappen closes up on him and that's going to throw out the full caution yellows and eventually he's going to throw out a full safety car as well. So that is going to be a retirement for him and it's going to close things up quite interestingly enough actually because now we have a really good chance to attack Verstappen on the restart here. You know, you can see the, this gap we've got at the moment is going to close up on the, on the safety car restart and on, on the jump, you know, as we go green, we're going to have the best chance to possibly get into the lead this Grand Prix. You can see Stroll, Raikkonen and the likes of Hamilton not even there on the left-hand side quite yet. And it's going to be Magnussen who's going to actually lead the way of this race. Verstappen up into P2, myself P3, Palmer is in P4. So he's somehow jumped Raikkonen and Hamilton then uh, for P3 effectively. A net P3 is obviously Magnussen's eventually going to come in. But here we go. We've gone green and we're already going. And so you can see here from now on we can overtake Verstappen. It's green flags. And so we're going side by side with Verstappen down the inside of the second last corner and the last corner now. And so, so close. They're even banging tyres on the left hand side. Absolutely awesome little jostle with Max Verstappen. And down the inside for turn one. That little kink. We're going to get it. And Palmer. Look at that. Johnny and Palmer might get into second place here. So Verstappen not only is going to lose the lead, he may go down to third place effectively of this Grand Prix eventually as Magnussen will eventually come in of course but the two guys behind us still battling away through turn three and Palmer is just about going to get it. So the Renault up into P2. Fantastic stuff for him. And so we move on to the end of lap 15 still chasing after Magnussen so he's actually had some decent enough pace to still keep it ahead for this long but now I feel like we should be able to get this through the final corner then up into Richmond's DRS is enabled now so we'll have that rear flap opening and so down at the main straight we should be able to get this into turn two so we'll get in the slipstream here and then this will be the actual official lead of the Grand Prix no longer just a net first place down the inside close stuff there Magnussen to be fair to him still kept it well under the brakes but eventually we will get that on the exit into turn three and we're up into first place and so now the job is just to keep this head we've got seven laps remaining now as we move on to lap 20 and the job is simple we've just got to try our best to defend from Jolian Palmer and Max Verstappen and potentially Dan Ricciardo who's still just about there in P4 behind Verstappen. You can see on lap 20 actually uh, into turn 2. Not actually being pressurised at the moment by Jolian Palmer so for now things are actually quite calm but you know we're, we're not using rich mix we're still saving a little bit of fuel in the back pocket because I feel like Palmer will come, about, come back to attack eventually and literally as I speak about that on lap 23 that's what he's doing and that's why we're in rich mix although we get very lucky there's a retirement there on the right hand side there of I think one of the Sauber cars and so the yellow flag comes out. So potentially Palmer could have made a move to the inside there of that uh, end of that back straight. But the yellow flag's kind of saved our bacon there in terms of obviously you can't make a move under the yellow flags. And so as we move on to lap 26 with uh, two laps to go as we enter the second last lap of the Grand Prix. Again, still all nice and calm into turn two. Palmer unable to have the legs on us 
down that main straight. But as we swing through turn three, I take a slightly wider line. Not too much, but just enough wider. That Palmer feeds it around the outside in what is a very audacious move and surprising one from my, uh, myself in my cockpit because I really didn't think going a little bit wide in turn three was going to allow him to make that move. But he tried it. Didn't work out. And actually, in the end of it, you can see there in the background of his staff and then dives down the inside. Very opportunistic from him into sector two. He's up into second place. And Palmer in a Red Bull sandwich of his own. But uh, very, very odd. Literally, like, just a couple of centimeters, a little bit wide from the racing line in turn three. And that allows Palmer to get not even slipstream, just more momentum through that tighter line of his and tried a very, very audacious move, but obviously didn't work out. And now down the back straight, Verstappen is going to have a chance here with DRS. We're going to have to go defensive to the inside of the corner. So he's on the left-hand side of this circuit. We're going to break a little bit early to make sure we don't lock up, but that's going to allow us to keep the momentum through crucially. And so as you go around the outside then of the next left hand, a tiny bit of contact made there as the hand of anger goes through. And it's actually a really nice battle with Verstappen still there, but into the chicane on the, on the uh, second part of the chicane. It's a very off-camber chicane and we're able to to get that through just you know break a little bit later there get the car wide on purpose on that entry and we're going to keep p1 there so into the last corner then for on towards the last half of the grand prix this could be it this could be the one i've taken this home this race win our first race win for mercedes let's see verstappen's going to have one more chance i think maybe uh, one of two on this lap let's see as he goes down the inside of turn two we squeeze him hard but we go back to the racing line we go to the wider line we're going to straighten up the car a lot faster into turn three and we've kept it ahead for now and so the question is he's got one one more attempt potentially which is going to be that back straight with DRS so let's cut through and see if he's going to make it as we move into the end of that straight no it's not he's not got enough speed and momentum there and so he's not even tried to make a pass and so as we enter sector three it's going to be nice and calm just make sure we don't bottle this it's easy to slip up in that chicane get the car wide a little bit get the tail out just nice and easy we're in rich mix at the moment we've got enough fuel to see us at the end there in rich mix and we're just going to train this through now and as the checkered flag starts to fly through the final corner it's going to be the win at the russian grand prix so so satisfying and just so so worth it after a miserable miserable day in qualifying a really tough race last time out the bar in grand prix but toto wolf is happy i am very happy as we brought home mercedes amg's first win of this season it wasn't hamilton after it really looked like in the first three rounds hamilton had the measure over us we got the win and that's absolutely awesome and we've broken that cycle now of just a uh, generally inconsistent runs and sebastian vettel the man who's won two out of three is down verstappen second and jolian palmer third place absolutely awesome we've tamed the beast for now obviously we got a little bit lucky with the safety car the safety car was really crucial because obviously the safety car allowed us to get that jump on the staff and otherwise i'm not gonna lie it would have been quite difficult to catch the staff in, in normal circumstances but once i got ahead we're able to stay ahead you know that's uh, not surprising really the mercedes we've seen in real life the characteristic is it's not really great whilst it's trying to race other cars like when it's behind other cars the dirty air effect just seems to be a lot more on the mercedes car but when it's leading the way it's harder for cars to actually catch it and that's what you've seen today you saw many times until the last two laps really i was actually quite comfortably leading the way you know i was keeping palmer at, a, at an arm's length of about a second and that was good enough for me i didn't feel like i needed to put the hammer down really and i was just keeping him there for most of those last seven laps so it was actually a really nice performance at the end there and good showing from our car and so now eventually like i mentioned we finally have enough points to buy a minor upgrade at the end of this episode unfortunately couldn't do it last time out so after a little bit of debate in my head we're going to go towards the aerodynamics i thought about the chassis but we've already got one upgrade comes to the chassis so i thought we'd do the next uh, aerodynamic probably uh, available to us and it's going to be the drag reduction i did look at that drs activation but i just don't see the point of the upgrade because that's all to do with drs only i'd rather have a all out kind of for every kind of moment in the race drag reduction update so that's going to reduce the drag you can see that's going to jump us back up ahead of red bull aerodynamically there on the chart interestingly enough actually it's uh, you can see that on the chart we've actually got an upgrade to our DRS already on the Mercedes car. It's actually the update where basically when we have DRS activated, I think the slot gap is open uh, open a lot wider than it would normally be, and we've got that upgrade. So actually, that's kind of showing that kind of showed off in this race when we you know tried to overtake Hamilton. The slipstream we got on him was amazing with DRS, and so maybe that upgrade is coming to play. So that's actually quite a good upgrade to have in the in the kind of banker for later on the season when we maybe we're fighting cars a little bit harder for race wins. Knock on wood, hopefully. But uh, guys. If you have enjoyed this episode, smash that like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you're new around here, then do get subscribed for weekly Formula 1 content. I've been Ava. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.